Like I have physical evidence against Rebecca Schofield that validates everything that I've said about her, but I can't speak on it now because I would love to see the physical evidence she has to confirm that Rebecca Schofield was trying to get into a romantic relationship with Kaylee and that Rebecca Schofield was struggling with her own internalized lesbianism and all of that wild shit. And then talking about like how she had plans to leave her husband in order to spend the rest of her life with Kaylee and then having to hire an assassin to take her out. I would love to see the physical evidence she had for those claims. Oh, true, the tarot cards. That, that doesn't lie. That's a good point. I didn't even think about the tarot cards. That is going to be a crucial piece of evidence. She has an alt account. Ashley is God in the flesh. And she posts there frequently, updated three hours ago, and said the investigators are wrong. And she did the right thing using her gift for right reasons. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. There's still more. Ashley is God in the flesh, huh? That's like... A major so, so, sin, by the way. I, she seems to be very religious. To claim that you are God is like a major no-no. It's like she never even read the Bible or knows anything about it for some reason. God fucking smited an entire, entire town for making that golden statue of uh, whatever it was. Then they follow the took the bait with Brian Koberger. Brian Koberger isn't... He didn't make the smartest decision regarding the murders but he didn't commit the murders so the people that they should have been arresting is rebecca scofield and jack decor so stop blaming me for other people's ignorance incompetence or negligence that's amazing holy lord what in the world what a load of horseradish this is this is fascinating. I also want to keep up with some of the commenters. They know what's up. That's why they issued the gag orders. Not to mention Brian is 100% sure to be ex exonerated. I I want to keep up with every commenter as well and see what happens when it turns out Brian is most likely the murderer. I I hope Rebecca if you're watching. I hope you will make the trial with uh, Ashley live streamed. That would be one of the most entertaining fucking things because I know Ashley's going to represent herself. Absolutely. She's going to bring the tarot cards. She's going to bring some incense. Maybe a Ouija board. 100%. I'm going to prove that it's Rebecca. I'm going to communicate with the dead students on my Ouija board. I have no doubt she would. Oh! Oh my god, maybe Ashley does have spiritual powers, holy lord. Oh, I'm under a psychic attack. One of my uh, little Warframe figurines fell over. Okay, never mind, Ashley's powerful, I take it back, holy shit. She's got, she's got gifts no mortal was meant to wield. How are you jump scared easily? I'm not at all. I didn't expect an entire fucking Warframe figurine to fall over. What the fuck do you mean? That's like the exact opposite of being jump scared easily. It's a loud noise. Did you not hear it on stream? She's got this shungite now. Oh no. Her staff of shungite. She has a whole blog on her website of her solving the case. The ability to access and interpret information from the universal consciousness. Huh. I use my ability to help solve mysteries and see beyond the surface of people, places, and things. Oh, you're right. Yeah, here's an entire blog. Solving the mystery of the murder of the four University of Idaho students. Tracking this whole thing. This is just horrible. Because it's, it's real people that she's accusing of being the murderers. If you've got a full belly, prepare yourself because you might just puke upon seeing and listening to this unbelievable, embarrassing cringe. This is the worst flirting, the worst attempt at wooing a potential romantic interest I have ever seen. This is like playing a visual novel and then scaring away all of your potential love interests at once and getting the worst ending. Now I'd like to give a bit of context here. 
situation before we really dive into the meatballs from our spaghetti entree of cringe. A user on Twitter posted screenshots as well as videos from a random guy who had reached out to her on Facebook because he had seen her on a dating app. The two didn't even match. And I guess he must have assumed that it was some kind of glitch because they were destined to be lovers. It was fate that was pulling them together, but unfortunately technology had a malfunction. So he took matters into his own hands, tracked her down on Facebook, of which she had no connection to the dating app. She didn't connect any of her socials to the dating app, so he did some super sleuthing to find her on Facebook and reach out to her there to try and win her heart. And uh, let's see how that went. Kelsey! I love that intro right there. It's straight out of scary movie. It's like that old commercial. What's up? <laughs> He's coming at her like their best friends from way back in the day. He then executes Order 66 and kills all potential for romance. He goes, I mean, uh, okay, shit. Mayhaps that was a tad overly enthusiastic for a stranger danger message on a sunny Friday morning. There is so much quirk to the way that he texts that I'm getting uncomfortable. I can say with a high level of confidence that he is definitely in some kind of theater troupe because he is typing like he's acting out some kind of skit for a play. It's, it's, it's a little much here. My bad, let's go with, uh, I can explain. Fuck yeah, that works. Then drops a couple of emojis and then one of these bad boys. How she didn't immediately fall in love with this man is beyond me. This is aggressive. And it's already creepy because it's a complete stranger who saw her on a dating app and then tracked her down in order to, you know, really directly communicate with her. So... Let's go over where things went wrong here. I, I'll go ahead and get the, the playbook out like John Madden and say where everything fell apart for the offense. From the start, basically. It, there is nothing that's even remotely salvageable from what he tried to do here. There is nothing more annoying than texting like you're talking to yourself during the text. Like when you say something like, Kelsey, I mean, oh wait, shit, hmm, mayhaps that was a tad too far on a stranger danger sunny friday afternoon hmm goodness gracious how do i save this like that that is so fucking lame that is shameful that is just downright shameful i am shocked he didn't drop like an asterisk nuzzles you and then an asterisk you there yeah and then one of those emojis so she said sorry do i know you and then it reactivates this cringe protocol he says, oh hey, no we don't know each other. Sincere apologies for the subterfuge. <laughs> oh brother, this guy stinks. Dropping subterfuge here in your creepy approach to a stranger. If you give me the tiniest bit of room, I'd be happy to explain. I reckon that said explanation will bring laughs and smiles. P.S. Not trying to rope you into a pyramid scheme to sell fancy Tupperware. Yet. He's trying very hard to be self-aware. And when he starts sending his voice memos to her, he reiterates a thousand times like, this is weird, oh, you're probably gonna think I'm weird, and then just keeps doing it. He sends so many voice messages that go for a long, long time. It's making my voice crack because of how fucking embarrassing it is. And you wanna know the wildest part? I'm getting ahead of myself and it's a spoiler. He has done this to multiple women, apparently. Other women have come forward after this tweet and all of this, uh, the receipts here and all that went viral with other women showing their interactions with him. And he even uses like the exact same lines on other women, which is really odd considering that has to be a 0% success rate. These, these can't be working well at all. It's so weird. So she decides to play ball here and open Pandora's box to see what comes out. She says, explain away. And he gives a brief, you know, cool guy thing. Oh god, I just spent 60 minutes singing to seniors and man am I drained. But fuck it, I can do this. He's hyping himself up in the text messages he is sending to this girl. It is so embarrassing and he keeps doing it. But it gets worse because right after that, he sends a voice message. Hey Kelsey, how's it going? Don't mind me, I fucking hate texting. I think we're all better without it, so I usually use one of these when I can. 
Um, also, I don't know if you've ever seen that Key and Peel skit, but that's how I feel about texting. I could go on. Anyway, um, I just want you to know right off the bat, I fully accept how fucking weird this is. I'm sorry, but like I said, I think if you give me a second, you'll probably end up laughing. And uh, not that you need my permission, but feel free to just laugh directly at me for being a fucking idiot, for I am surely about to embarrass myself right now. I do appreciate your stamp of approval. I and everyone else will be laughing directly at you for this, and... I, I appreciate that you recognize what an unbelievably weird thing it is to do. I don't know why you keep doing it. This is the first of many voice messages he sends, even after recognizing this immutable fact that it is weird and embarrassing. <laughs> and sorry for the delay. I was going to get back to you, but I just, someone called about a gig tomorrow and I'm trying to help them find a musician. Also, I'm not sure if I'm fucking funny anymore. I just spent 60 minutes, like I said, uh, playing guitar and singing to a room full of senior citizens, but the room was stuffy and hot. I had to do it with the surgical mask on, and I'm not sure if I have any funny or social energy left, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and fake it right now. So thank you for your understanding and patience, and uh, here goes nothing, I'm a fucking idiot, enjoy. He's actually treating this like it's some kind of movie audition. What are you talking about? I also just, I, I love that he immediately makes himself seem like super busy, like, hey, sorry for the delay, I know you were waiting on bated breath for my explanation, but I had to help uh, very big musicians find a gig. Uh, you you may have heard of them before. Bring me the horizon. Uh, yeah, I, I I'm the lead singer. Uh, so I had a lot going on. Uh, I was double booked, so I had to give them a different band. You may have heard of them, Metallica. Uh, but anyway, let me go ahead and explain what's going on. I just finished one of my own gigs, in fact. So I'm a little I'm a little drained, but don't be perturbed because I, I'm gonna do my best to fake it. So stay tuned for uh, part two. It's it's coming right up. Yeah, like he's he's about to go through his uh, stand up comedy routine, which. You know, you don't want to miss. In the trenches, I'm on my dating for a couple of years, so I definitely know how to identify the kind of person. I'm like, eh, if nothing else, the world would be better if we were friends. So, hear me out. Um, first of all, I never fucking see that shrug emoji. No one else uses it. It's typed into my phone. If I, if I type shrug with two Gs, it just shows up. Same thing on my laptop. Like, I'll use it in work emails. Fuck it. Um, so right away, I'm like, huh, interesting. I don't get it, though. She's cute. For how pretty she is, she should be boring. Why does she seem kind of strange in a good way? That's a spectacular start right there. I was like, she's kind of pretty, so why isn't she like a fucking lobotomite boring dumbass? Like, she used an emoji that I really like. And she's pretty. Like, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Pretty women can't have a personality, but you're like defying all of science right now. He just keeps going on about this fucking shrug emoji. He's talking about her bio on the dating site, and he just really fixates on that. That shrug emoji is like Cupid's arrow to this guy. He fell in love instantly when he saw it in her bio. I don't know why he thought it was a compliment to say that she's like strange and different in a good way because pretty women are like boring or, or whatever and insinuates that a pretty girl can't have a personality. I don't know what the thought process was with that approach, but it's definitely a bold play. Um, I think you said something about live music. My job is actually live music. I play guitar and sing. I do about 25 shows a month. Uh, I know it sounds made up. I feel like I invented the job. It's ridiculous, but I live very comfortably. Life is good. Um, I do play at a lot of retirement homes, and it's great for my self-esteem, Kels, as I am a big hit with women over 80. Time out. Time out. Uh, technical foul here. He just dropped a redonkulous. He just said redonkulous. And then not only that, in his only second voice message here he's already just calling her kels they're not even on like a first name basis they're not uh, acquaintances they these are two complete strangers and he's already giving her like a nickname what the fuck oh yeah and just the night before i'd been talking to one of my best friends in the world roxy um, just people that like match you and just write hey so if someone writes hey i just write hi and if someone writes sup i go nothing much you. first name basis they're and, not like, People that match me and clearly haven't read my these fucking are two bio. Complete strangers Folks and will he's match and be like, so what do you do for a living? I'm like, uh, what the fuck? come on, Chelsea. Like, oh, yeah, yeah you're kind of cute, but I'm pretty good and sweet. Try harder. Best in the world Why are you even talking about this? You're like trauma dumping like, on this complete stranger right now that you've tracked down from a dating app to try and communicate directly with because you didn't match with her. What the fuck is this? Now you're just going on about like, ah, dating apps are so weird. People just say like, hey. So then I'm like, 
Hi. You don't know how to have a conversation. You didn't You didn't read the bio that I painstakingly typed up. I spent a long time on that bio and now I'm offended. It's ridiculous. Uh, excuse me. Redonkulous. I don't know. It's just to see someone mention that in a bio, I'm like, thank you. I can see that you feel the same as me. What the fuck is this? Can I just go on about like, I always think that effort should match interest in dating. So if you're curious, you don't know how to have a conversation. You didn't You didn't read the bio that I painstakingly typed up. I spent a long time on that bio and now I'm offended. It's ridiculous. And he's like, if the guy Guy's interested, he will call. I and it's true. It's just so I found a line mentioned years ago. It's like effort you always match interest. It will show you how interested so uh, yeah. And like I'm pretty goddamn sweet, and I am not that lonely or so funny. I'm not gonna take bread crumbs from someone if I want a sandwich. So if someone hits me with that, you can go fuck yourself. He's just sounding like a complete unhinged asshole here. It's not that deep. What do you mean they can just go fuck themselves? No one's even like. What does this have to do with anything in this situation? This isn't even flirting. This is just blurting. He's just blurting out all the most nonsensical shit in his head right now to a complete stranger. And not only that, this is probably not even his He's first take. Like I bet he recorded this like here. 10 times until he had one that was like, this themselves. is the one. This was no smooth. Even, like, what and th th that's what we got here. We got the final product. This, this isn't even like the first draft, I, I doubt. He's just Which blurting is, out all the most nonsensical I mean, shit in his head right now to a complete stranger. Um, and not but, uh, yeah, no, your bio is just, there was so much intentional effort put in, and honestly, the more I scroll down in the pics, I'm like, this does not match up. I don't want to sound like an asshole, like, attractive people can also be interesting and funny, but it's, it's just incredibly rare. I speak, uh, speak for myself, because I'd like to consider myself one of those. That's the end of chapter two from the voice memos, but don't worry, there's still a finale, and it's, it's the extended director's cut. The next one's over five minutes long. Also... He doubles down on this whole, like, yeah, you're, like, pretty, but you have a personality, which that just does not happen. I don't know why he thinks that that's some kind of, like, grand compliment. It's very odd. Now, before playing the five-minute, 30-second monologue here, uh, he must have seen that she listened to it. He's like, ha, ah, gotcha. Yeah, I gotcha. Red-handed. You listen to it. Curiosity got the better of you. And then she says, dude. So you saw me on Bumble and found me on Facebook? How? Clearly very creeped out by it, understandably. And then he goes, Oh, I honestly just typed in Kelsey and I guess I got lucky. I figured because you put live music we might have some friends in common or something. I blame Zuckerberg and then laughing emoji. Which contradicts everything that he's said here because he's constantly talking and referencing her bio, which I think is referring to her dating profile bio. Especially because he does mention, like, online dating with A's and highs and shit. So I don't even know why he thought that would somehow save the situation. Like, she'd be fooled by it. For the love of fuck, I was like two minutes into one, and it was awesome and funny, and I was so proud of it, and then someone called me again about a gig this evening, and it's like, you know that thing where your friends know you're busy or you're on a date or something, and then that's when they decide to call? Jesus Christ. Excellent. Chef's kiss. This is how you start a, a romantic message. Oh, for the love of fuck. I was in the middle of something spectacular. You were gonna love it, Kels. You were gonna love it. Trust me. But then one of my fucking asshole friends called me about a gig. Because I'm so busy being a successful live musician. Can you believe that, Kels? Can you believe that? It's like those things, you know, where like, we both go on dates, right? I go on dates. Clearly, you go on dates, and sometimes when you're just busy, people call. It's Jesus Christ. But yeah, no, your bio was just the fucking bee's knees. I mean, listen, top three in like the hundreds or thousands I've seen, it was just, I don't know. I'm a very good judge of character, and you just seem like my kind of person. And I'm not saying we're star-crossed lovers. I don't know you, and you don't know me. That's 100% correct. You don't know each other. So why are you doing this? This is not how you get to know someone. This is concerning. Also... You should never admit to seeing hundreds or thousands of dating profile bios. That makes you sound very desperate, that you spend all of your time on these dating apps, perusing it, cruising around, and if you don't match with someone you found attractive or interesting based on their bio, you go out of your way to find them elsewhere to try and talk to them, which is very scary behavior. I fully accept how strange and unconventional this is. I just, I got a vibe and I figured I got to go with it. I was like in a really good mood that day. I don't know. <laughs> I'm totally winging it. But um, yeah, a lot of my close friends are women and 
everyone unfortunately has a couple stories of having to block someone's number or an ex just won't leave them alone or going to the cops fuck dude i've had to block a few numbers of crazy people that didn't know they were crazy so i really really apologize sincerely if this in any way like triggered that or it was weird or whatever uh kelsey that's the furthest thing from my intention i just wanted to say howdy and i figured if i talk like an idiot you'd probably feel like i did after i looked at your bio it's so close he's teetering on the edge of self-awareness him saying all of this out loud should have led to this eureka moment where he was overcome with immense shame and he just presses the eject button and deletes the voice memo and doesn't doesn't continue this conversation like he's clearly pointing out just how weird all this is he's even going into all of his friends or women who you know have stories about having to block crazy people who didn't know they were crazy like case in point what you're doing here but you keep trying to like make it seem like it's not weird even though you do keep acknowledging how weird it is so like you're, you're fighting like a battle against yourself in your own messages you are calling yourself out in front of the person that you're talking to as well it's really weird oh okay it's not fair you've seen mine or sorry i've seen yours and you have not seen mine if you want i will screenshot my bumbo bio i'm quite proud of it i think it's pretty fucking good it represents me well and um what else would i want to know if i was you Gee, I'm like six feet tall, um, pretty damn handsome. I'd give me like a seven. No, like a seven and a half out of ten looks wise. I mean, to my knowledge, no one has dated me for my abs or my hair. I'm guessing it's because I'm funny and honest and clearly very humble and go to therapy and emotionally intelligent. It's not a job interview, bro. You don't need to be giving your resume here. Brother, just stop. I... I please <laughs> goodness gracious seven and a half maybe even an eight i'm feeling really fucking good lately i got a tan i'm up to like 80 second side planks i hate them but they're totally worth it for the core and um big feet so you know what that means baby doll big socks <laughs> um you're scaring me you you are scaring me why would you do that what from, from from way downtown here, he's throwing up a crazy jump shot. He, he immediately goes into, I've got big feet. You know what that means, baby girl. Oh my lord, please. Have mercy, have mercy. Why, why? What else? I feel like I didn't tell you enough about the bio too. That shrug emoji was just, if nothing else, the fact that like you look like a Disney princess and you use that, I'm like, fuck it, I gotta talk to her. So, um... Oh, I was definitely getting strong Kirsten Bell vibes, too, and she's awesome. I don't know if you listen to her husband's podcast, Armchair Expert, with Dak Shepard. I know it's quite the reference, but I have a feeling you might know what that is. One of my favorite episodes, actually, um, is it Lauren Graham that plays Lorelai? She was on there. Anyway, I am um, all over the fucking place, as is my, my job. You're also all over the place in this one-sided conversation. Now you're shouting out podcasts, talking about fucking shrug emoji again. <laughs> it's it's hurting me listening to this it, it is it, let this be a lesson to everyone out there watching this just don't do anything even remotely like this never engage in a one-sided conversation where you have to be the one filling in blanks in a conversation that doesn't really exist uh, but I'm sitting here, a middle-aged guy in his car with the AC on and a SpongeBob shirt, and I would call this, like, the technological version of, you know, when, like, Noah stops Allie in the notebook, and he's like, I just, I had to talk to you when I see something I want. <laughs> yes, I just made a notebook reference. I don't know. I'm, I'm being a total idiot right now. So, if nothing else, I figured you'd have a laugh and a smile, and you can fucking make fun of me to your friends. I don't know. Now you have a solo podcast for a guy that makes, like, six grand a month on a microphone being an idiot. He was right. This is something that everyone can laugh about and have a big smile on their face making fun of this whole situation. And then out of nowhere, he drops like his salary from his job, like to flex. He just like slides that in there, which I mean, it's it's an interesting strategy yet again. This this guy's got a wild book of tricks. I'm sorry, I don't normally bring up money, but I feel like I created my job out of thin air and like I just submitted my 2022 taxes and shit's been getting so much better the last few years. So I'm quite proud of it. That wasn't me trying to uh, impress you though with money. I've got way more impressive shit than that. Uh, just slipped up. I hope we can still be friends. Anyway, um... Why, why leave it in there then? You saying that clearly made you uncomfortable. You could have just deleted this and, and just tried again. 
though I don't think you should have tried again regardless, this shouldn't have happened to begin with, but you yourself just made, <laughs> you just made yourself puke in your mouth when you said your, your, you know, six grand a month out loud like that as like a flex. And you still let it ride. You still let this Beyblade rip. Why? You look like a goddamn Disney princess. The bio completely floored me. I felt like it was written by a friend or something. I just got like strong, like fellow neurodivergent, super cool, um, gregarious, happy person vibes. And uh, yeah. So listen, I'm an open book. You probably figured that out like six over shares ago. If you have any questions for me, please hit me. Don't be shy. Uh, if you want, I'll share my bio. I feel like it's unfair that, you know, I've seen yours and you haven't seen mine. I'm quite proud of my bio. This entire situation has been nothing but overshares from you. She's not going to ask you any questions. No sane person would. It's not going to happen. This whole thing was a complete catastrophe. And once again, hung up on this fucking bio thing. They're just bios. Most people write them in 10 seconds. I, I don't know how long he spent, like, finally crafting his, but that is not the norm. I, I'm sure she didn't spend days coming up with her bio on here. I don't know how it, it resonated so strongly with this guy, but I bet after this whole song and dance, the, the woman here immediately just deleted the, her whole account, or at the very least removed the bio entirely. Um, yeah, for the 80th time, I apologize if this was weird. Uh, or like gave you any bad vibes. That's not my intention. Um, yeah, I gotta drive home now because I gotta go sing at a bar in Mississauga and I have four more gigs this weekend and it hurts to talk. So <laughs> I'm sitting here in my car like a jackass. And uh, yeah, I hope that all made some kind of sense. And if nothing else, please take the sincere compliment. I've seen hundreds of shitty bios, probably thousands, and yours was easily top three. The only reason I'm not giving you number one is because then it would seem like I'm lying. But I'm a very genuine, honest person, and, uh, yeah. Actually, on my way home, I'm gonna go to the park and feed the ducks. My favorite swan couple, Mr. Plump and Mr. Pl and Mrs. Plumfett, they just had babies a couple weeks ago. So, like, I'll run up, and they recognize me, and the babies are squeaking. The hierarchy of, like, waterfowl cute babies, it goes swan babies, then ducklings, and then goslings. But, um, yes, I may or may not do that four to seven times a week. I'm a huge animal lover. Dogs are better than cats. Cats suck. Sorry if you have cats, but I'm sure your cat is cool. That was one of the most peculiar lies I've ever heard. You're going to stop at the park on the way home so you can visit your favorite swan couple, Mr. Plumph and Mrs. Plumfett, because they just had babies a couple weeks ago, and they recognize you and get excited and start squeaking when you come by. Like you're part of the family, part of the crew, part of the ship. What universe? What the fuck? That's not even something Dr. Seuss would write as like a little goofy side plot in a story. This is the- that is- that is the biggest lie I've ever heard for no reason. For no- for no reason. I, I, the quirkiness is overloading. Like, the cup runneth over on quirk. Wow. And, uh, yeah, take the compliment. Anyway, uh, apologies if this totally, like, intruded on your day opposite of my intention. And, uh, yeah, your bio was fucking awesome. I mean, there's a couple other assets I noticed too, but I cannot mention them without sounding like a fuckboy, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm sure you've worked very hard to be in the shape you're in, but goddamn, lady. God damn, I would not kick you out of bed for eating crackers. So I figured if you are half as funny as you seem to be and half as cool as I got from that bio, I would say howdy. Um, yeah, all right. Hope this made you laugh and smile, and uh, you have a fantastic old day, Kelsey. Cheers. And that's the, the grand finale of this whole situation, and what a journey it was. I find this to be probably the best example of the worst approach to romance imaginable. And like I said, this was not an isolated incident. He's done this before. <laughs> like, he, and he's even used the same lines before. Which is so, it's so wild. It's so wild. I had to talk about it. I had to. So yeah, that's, that's really about it. So yeah. I would just watch the cross-examination. That's what I'm looking for. That's what we're going to be catching up with. We got to talk about her fucking Dr. Evil outfit. She is unironically dressed like Dr. Evil. It's crazy. I saw so many comparisons. Kim Jong-un, Dr. Evil, Mao Zedong. Those are the three main ones. This is exactly what the outfit looks like, though. She looks like an angry dictator wearing this. I don't know who is, like, guiding her here. I don't know what, what the fuck they're doing. They must be a real big Johnny Depp fan. Those are some weird clothing choices. I... 
like I, I can't even imagine why she would choose these clothes. It just it, it makes no sense. Yeah, so all I know going into this, I tried to avoid spoilers. Uh, I know they caught Amber Heard on her lie about donating the seven million that she got from the divorce settlement. She just kept saying she was pledging seven million from the divorce settlement without ever actually donating it over the course of however many years she's been divorced from Johnny Depp. Which is a pretty big lie to catch someone in. This looks like an unbelievable asshole. He promised you he would never, you would never see his eyes again. Isn't that true? I don't recall if he said that. One of the last times you ever saw Mr. Depp was when you met him in San Francisco. This is coming out swinging. Right? Yes. This lawyer goes in. It seems like it. She's already kind of come out the gate firing. You want to enter in it. I have to imagine, though, that's not the reason Johnny Depp doesn't look at her. That's like some anime shit. I promise she'd never see my eyes again. It's probably he really doesn't want to look at a woman who has uprooted his entire life with all kinds of crazy shit. Please, I just wanted to hug you. Just say bye. I didn't want to get back. So it sounds like they have new evidence. I've never heard this. No, because I'm nothing to you. I can't really understand what's being said. Oh. Well, I guess that was real. That's you and Mr. Depp in that recording. That is. Tell them Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp, man, I'm victim of domestic violence. And I know it's a fair fight. If these puppy people believe or side with you, and the man you beat up numerous times. Oh, right, Mr. Heard? I could never hurt Johnny. Vicious. You're here in this courtroom because Mr. God Depp finally told the world that he is a victim of domestic violence. Or, as you said to him in that recording, who was going to believe that Johnny Depp, a man, is a victim of domestic violence. My God, and they're cooking Amber's cheeks right now. Respect. She's kind of going in. Because he's a man. I was saying it because it was a man who beat me up for five years. He is an abuser and... You can look either of us up online and figure out who's being abused online. That's a really bad play, Amber, because when you look up your name plus domestic abuse, even aside from Johnny Depp, you get the actual criminal lawsuit with you and your ex-girlfriend where you beat her up. So, like, you wouldn't really want people to look you up plus domestic abuse, even outside of Johnny Depp. Uh, she's, she's on the ropes right now. The big fucking yikes. It is. She has a legitimate case against her from 2009 where she beat up her ex-girlfriend but then she said it was actually overplayed she didn't beat her up she simply hit her or something like that so there's no medical records reflecting any injuries to your face after he, he hit you several times i did not need to go to the doctor at the time despite hitting you several times that you lost count with rings on, your, on his face that's correct i did not seek medical attention other than my therapist well, there's no injuries to the face, Testified as she just confirmed, which means that statement was a lie. You didn't produce any photographs after that alleged incident, did you? I, I don't know if I took one or if it's included. Reese of Prime Toast and Reese of Dragon and Duck. You didn't show any pictures to the jury after describing that alleged chance. incident that your your lip went into your teeth. You don't remember that, right? I, you didn't I show any pictures to the jury after describing that incident, right? I don't believe I've seen that picture admitted. That picture doesn't exist. I don't know which one you're talking about. There were we have pictures from March 2013. What yes. do you mean? What the fuck? The only picture that you Who is coaching Amber for like debate team here? Like a high schooler? This isn't granted I've seen very little, but this usually isn't how it happens, right? Usually it's a lot more concise and pointed as opposed to obtuse cuz she's already completely thrown out this entire picture with this strategy. She confirmed that this is the incident where she claimed Johnny Depp hit her so many times in the face she forgot or she lost count. And then the picture to back up that evidence is a bruise on her arm which shows no injury to the face. Which immediately discredits that photo. She is terrible at this. I know she fired her entire team beforehand but didn't she replace them or is she just going solo? That's, that's a real question, I don't know. Did, did she like hire a new team after she fired them? Oh, it was her, oh that's right, it was a PR team. Oh, that's right. I forgot it was the PR team. You didn't take any pictures of your bloody nose either, did you? I did not. But pictures were taken of you in Russia, though. Isn't that correct? Yes, that, that's correct. We had a press or a dinner. Um, let's please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1248. 
And this is you and Mr. Depp in Russia for the Lone Ranger premiere, correct? It was oh a man, what a stinker of a movie. For in promotion of the movie. It wasn't the premiere, if I recall. You don't have any visible injuries to your face, do you? None that you can see. Admit. Exhibit one, two, four, nine. Right, one, two, four, nine. Damn, paparazzi's actually really helping this case. In Russia for the Lone Ranger, right? That is correct. You have no visible injuries to your face, do you? None that you can see. Even though Mr. Depp whacked you in the face so hard that your nose bled? Uh, he did. While wearing chunky big rings, right? That's correct. Ah, sounds reasonable. I have to imagine. Now, granted, I, I'm no pugilist. If you're getting blasted by, like, rings on fingers, it'd probably be kind of similar to, like, brass knuckles in a certain extent, right? That caused some serious damage, right? And she's still gonna sit there with a straight face and be like, you just can't see it, but it's there. This is only an hour and 55 minutes, and I feel like it's a speed run by dismantling half of her claims already. That's already through, like, three of them. Man, she's really going in. She said, alright, I'm gonna take this down, but I also have a, a lunch scheduled for three hours from now, so let's make it quick. It also helps that Amber Heard's doing a terrible job at defending herself. And you haven't produced any pictures or any medical records reflecting a broken nose after the Met Gala in May of 2014, have you? I have given everything to my lawyers. Everything. I've turned over literally everything. You need to fire those assholes then. This is a picture of you and Mr. Depp. Man, that makeup really yeah, fixed that broken Mr. nose Mr. right up. Depp allegedly whacked you in the face so hard you thought you had broken your nose. He did whack me in the face, and I did think it broke my nose. Ice will cover up swelling? Ice reduces swelling. Normally the swelling after that kind of injury is not as bad as you would, might imagine. And for me, what? it wasn't that bad. Bro, a picture of it. if you even get hit in the nose with like a basketball off of a bad pass, that shit puffs up. Let alone getting hit with a giant ringed fist. That These are not good claims to be making, Miss Turd. Man, she is. There are so many pictures. They came prepared. They did their homework. A picture you haven't produced or shown to this jury, right, Miss Heard? I have. So I've produced everything. But you haven't shown it to this jury. I would very much like to. It's not my job. Hmm. And she hates her lawyers too. I mean, I would too after yeah, this, to be honest. Yes, it's fine. Pretty smart though to use the lawyers as a scapegoat, but also pretty stupid considering they're the ones that are trying to keep you fifty million dollars, not in the hole. Amber Heard using chug jugs before taking photos. <laughs> okay. okay, then. Yeah, I guess. Is she going to jail, too? Uh, that's not the purpose of the trial. So, no. Unless she somehow, like, implicates herself in a big way, like... Something straight out of a cartoon, like, Yeah, I did it, and I'll do it again, too! And then lunges over at Johnny and starts beating his ass. There's a chance she may with perjury. I highly doubt- I mean, granted I haven't finished this, but I don't think there's any case of perjury against her, is there? Oh wow, Amber Heard perjury investigation continues. Holy shit. And a dog smuggling lawsuit, don't know what that is. I was checking on my phone, um, after the event to see- to make sure that nothing- you couldn't see anything. Your testimony was that you were checking in the car on the way to the event to Ooh. make sure that there were no marks on your back. Uh, perhaps I misspoke or I misunderstood. It was on the way back from it was after I was concerned. After, you know, concerned that there would be marks in any photographs since we were Tough. being photographed at Johnny's press event. This is you in the backwards dress of Mordecai from here in Tokyo, right? That is correct. You would agree that there are no bruises or visible marks on your back in this picture. No, not that I could see. I'll show you one other photo. Could you please have Plaintiff's Exhibit 1257? I see a mark. That's what I was wondering. I thought this was a scratch, and I was like, oh, so she she did have a scratch. But I'm guessing this is a tattoo? I, I don't know what that is. It is a tattoo? She has red text tattoo? Oh, it's just actually supposed to be red. Why? That's weird. I've never seen red text tattoos before. Makes it hard to read, I imagine. Makes it tier one grade, tier one red, and tier one lumberman. And there's some quick and Kyle and shoe. 
Spelling error. Oh, true. Yeah, I guess maybe her original text tattoo was spelled incorrectly. So like a teacher, she came in with the red ink above it for all the corrections. There aren't any medical records reflecting that you sought medical treatment for any of these injuries either. I did not seek uh, medical treatment after Australia. No. Not for the rape? No, I did not want to tell anyone. Not for the cuts? No. Not for the injuries to your face? I didn't need to. You also told the jury about an incident on December 15th, 2015, right? So that incident right there with the writing on the wall, so she took pictures of that, that shit she was talking about with the paint, where John, or, right, where Johnny Depp was like writing weird shit and paint on the wall. Is that the same timeline? With his finger? Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah, with his finger, where he was writing, and his like, finger cut it, like his finger cut it, or whatever. Okay, so that's the same one. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of broken nose points. With no medical attention to him any time. He got super regenerative powers with the Deadpool. Could please direct your attention, Ms. Her, to page day 16, 4, 5, 9, 3. The jury files transcript. Don't they still have someone on staff that transcribes these in real time? Or is that obsolete now with technology? Weird, uh, weird time to pause, I'm just curious. Yeah, it is still just a person that's trans- Man, hats off to them. That was such a fat bundle of papers, and to transcribe over eight and a half hours worth of deliberation is crazy. That's correct. Could you some law with big boy? Big boy. You also testified that your head was Sebastian. bleeding from where Mr. Depp ripped chunks of your hair out. Remember, yes. And that you have, quote, gross hussy, and quote, bruising around your temple. Uh, in my scalp, yeah. Now for this incident, you did take pictures. Correct? That's correct. And we will look at some of those in a minute, but I first want to talk to you about your appearance on the James Corden show. Oh, sure. fuck. Can I close this? You weren't lying, James Corden makes an appearance. Oh. Uh. Let's please pull up a clip of your appearance from that evening. We could plaintiff's oh, exhibit 35. Two, two, you're for the ghost. record, we will only be playing a portion of Thank this, so we will call it uh, plaintiff's exhibit 35A. Uh, any objection? 35A in evidence. We may have it oh. please published. Okay. Thank you. Apologies. If we can please start that over. Oh, right. double dose of James Corden. Oh my God. I grew up in Texas riding horses and. Oh, really? You know, it was not a big ballet community out there in Texas. No, uh, yeah, no, no, not so much. Shooting guns, yes, but ballet, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> and my face, though, is like, I've got that, you saw in the clip, like, the beautiful 1920s, you know, ma stage makeup on and, hate, like, flower. At the very least, and James Corden's not and talking my much. Hand, and my face, <laughs> and then my so hand. It could be worse. <laughs> I'll move to it and it and publish Plaintiff's Exhibit 98. Any objection? All right, Ms. Bernhardt, you could move the microphone and turn it on for you so Judy and I are having trouble hearing you. Sorry, bro. All right, thank you. All right, 98 in evidence. Thank you. If I got my ass beat, like, hardcore and then went on the James Corden show, I'd say the James Corden show would be more painful. That's I could get hit with a fucking sledgehammer and James Corden would right, still be worse. Right. That's correct. You did take pictures of your alleged injuries on, after December 15th, correct? And you showed those to this jury? I think for just some sure reason. Yes. Okay. Let's please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 516, which is already in evidence. You testified that this is a picture of you after the incident on December 15th, 2015, right? It was. This is also a picture of you after the incident on December 15th, 2015. That's correct. Oh, they're using a People magazine article for evidence? Oh! This one, These the one that started ended it all. up in People Magazine in June of 2016. Isn't that right, Ms. Heard? That's correct. You gave these pictures to People Magazine after you publicly accused Mr. Depp of domestic abuse, didn't you? I didn't personally know. No, this is him calling me a liar and me forcing to prove it. So you did give these pictures to People Magazine? No, I gave these um, pictures actually to my lawyers and my representatives. At the time. Um, so it's your testimony, Ms. Heard, that your lawyers and representatives gave these pictures 
of their client to People Magazine in the middle of a contentious divorce? I certainly did not personally give it. Man, they're about to be disbarred. I'll tell you what. Okay. They're the sweating. From, this is the entirety of the medical record. Right, Ms. Hurd? Yes, what I meant by partial is I didn't talk about what happened to me. I didn't get into my injuries. Mm. I didn't oh, I see. get into what happened or um, ask for anything other than should I get some sort of scan done. Right, but this record doesn't document any physical injuries on you, does it? Uh, I'd have to read it in full, but I, I don't know. Well, let's do that. What was their thought process there? Like, I'd have to read it later. I mean, obviously we're going to read it now. It's right here. Like, there was no way of getting around that. It is just, they have the whole thing. What a horrible idea. Like, what a dog shit strategy. It also says I'm a well-nourished male. Right. I have no idea what that means. I, I think this medical record's missing a lot of things. You don't have any medical records reflecting that you broke your nose during your relationship with What was she talking doctor? about with the uh, malnourished male part? I don't see that here. It was the top line. Oh, malnourished male. Oh, yeah. Malnourished male in NAD. Alert and oriented times four. Yeah, what does that mean? Anyone more knowledgeable than me? What does that mean? NAD stands for no acute distressed. Oh, so it's... Okay, then there's no way that's malnourished male. I imagine it's going to be well-nourished male. Moisture. Because that... Is wouldn't that... If it was a malnourished patient, wouldn't that immediately be, like, some kind of acute patient distress? Texture, I would think, turbor, right? It reads intact, normal color, moisture, hair distribution, texture, turgor. Oh, you're right. I just saw it. I saw it. I, right before it went up, I can tell it says well. There's no medical records reflecting that you broke your nose during your relationship with Mr. Depp. Is there a misheard? I don't know what made it in evidence, but I do know that I documented that um, visit and that everything was given to my attorneys. Ms. Heard, you never went Man. to see any doctor she hates her legal or surgeon team. or after you were with Mr. Depp as a result of any injuries you sustained as a result of Mr. Depp. Afterwards, yes, I did. And you didn't produce those medical records in this case. I'm going to object, Your Honor. She did. I did. I don't know. Right. They have not been produced. Yet yeah, they have not only right, if you would do it, so they approach. So are they here or are they not here? Where are they at? Is her lawyer wiping her ass with them? What you do have, Miss Heard, are pictures of Mr. Depp sleeping, though, right? The jury saw a lot of those. Yes. So let's take a look professor at in the bits 1090, which is already in evidence. You took this photograph, right, Miss Heard? That's correct. And you testified that this was taken in Tokyo in July of 2013, correct? Yes. So you decided to take a picture of Mr. Depp asleep on the floor? And sometimes and Carrie would carry him like a baby into bed, get him changed, and he would be none the wiser. So I started taking pictures of it so that he knew Prime tornado. that it was real, that it had gotten this bad. And this is a picture of Mr. Depp taking a nap on his tropical island? I uh, believe he was on the nod, but as he would say. Let's also take a look at Defendant's Exhibit 1092. Well, I don't which is get the point of that one. He's just actually sleeping. No drug related anything. You He's also just sleeping. Took this picture, right, Mr. That's correct. I did. And this is another picture of Mr. Depp asleep in a chair. No, he was um, nodding off. Uh, sleep is different when you're nodding off. You're high on drugs, didn't even feel the cigarette in his hand that had, you know, been burning on his leg. What uh, are you- Cause for alarm for me, naturally, um, because I cared about him. Does she not nap? Is she like an android? I've fallen asleep a million times just like that. Granted, no cigarette, though I also don't see one in the picture either, to be fair. It's- l he's literally just been sleeping in a chair for the last two photos. That's it. God damn your testimony under oath that Mr. Depp is holding a cigarette in this picture? He had been. And what happened to it? You seem to really like taking pictures of Mr. Depp while he's sleeping, don't you? I hated it. I hated it. He was nodding off and um, I was worried about how bad the medications and the medication change and the drug use had gotten where he wouldn't even feel ice cream or a lit cigarette on him and it scared me. So really what the of, fuck yeah. does that mean? When you fall asleep and you spill something on yourself, you're not gonna like feel it either. He's wearing jeans. Just ran down his legs. 
I, I really feel like she should have just went a different angle. Like, yeah, he drank himself into fucking trouble that night. That I'd believe. But she's trying to spin it in a way like I cared so much. So I took a picture of ice cream running down his legs while he fell asleep. It makes no sense. I too have gotten drunk and spilled shit on myself while falling asleep. Shit happens. The pictures, I... I'm not an expert, I'm not part of their legal teams, but I believe the pictures were to prove that Johnny Depp wasn't in control of himself sometimes due to substance abuse and alcohol. So these pictures are supposed to show him like the aftermath of a bender or something. But the only one you could even make an argument for is the one with ice cream on his leg. The other two is him just asleep in a chair in the Bahamas and asleep in a chair at his own home. And even the ice cream one, there's so much left for interpretation because it's just him sleeping and ice cream is on his leg. She could have put ice cream there and spilled it on him to make it look worse. Like, anything could have happened. He could have literally just fallen asleep while eating ice cream. It doesn't really set that character profile like I think they wanted it to, so it's just a big doofy. Point to the cocaine picture. I saw that. I'm, I mean, obviously Johnny Depp would always crack. He's a druggie. He's a druggie. Yeah, I'm just saying these pictures don't really do a good job of showcasing anything she's trying to get them to do. Johnny claimed Amber handed him the ice cream as he was falling asleep. <laughs> oh. Well, there's no way of proving that one way or the other. Regardless, it's very weak for evidence. I know this is Johnny Depp's lawyer. To show Amber taking a bunch of useless pics of her with zero pics of her so-called wounds. Yeah, I know. And his lawyer's doing a great job of setting that up. For some reason, Amber has a thousand pictures of him sleeping, but only two of injuries. At least two that we've seen so far. And the inju injuries aren't consistent with her statements. One of them she claims she was beat by Johnny Depp so many times in the face with his giant rings that she lost count how many times she was punched. And the picture is a bruise on her arm. And the other one is the split lip and the black eyes. You know it's not good when she hates the people trying to save her? That's another thing. I think... I think three times now she has blamed her legal team for the absence of evidence she claims to have produced. And she, and she got real dicey when she claimed the lawyers were the one that sent those pictures to People Magazine during an active investigation in, or an active case. Which would be a big no-no. It's your testimony. See? With all due respect, I'm not sure you know how that works. She's claiming this was staged. You do. And when you sent it, you said, Thanks, Resub Space Man. Look at my morning. And Resub did shit like in that. blue. Right? In blue roll. Yay, good mornings. So you have a habit of sending staged photographs to your friend Rocky, don't you? <laughs> I had a habit of communicating with my best friend about what was going on in my life. I don't think I have a picture of him mid snort. No. You don't even have any pictures of Mr. Depp with cocaine. What do you mean by that? Holding cocaine, standing next to cocaine. Um. Sitting next to cocaine. I don't know. Wow, this is an awfully bold line of questioning. I, so I wouldn't have chosen this approach. I'm pretty sure Johnny Depp knows his way around some cocaine. But it is a really good point to make since she took pictures of everything and went so far as to take them of him sleeping, she would have absolutely produced evidence of him near cocaine if he was truly like a monster snorting himself into deep comas and, and blazing disregard for human life. Pretty interesting tactic here. I would have never thought they'd try and pick apart this picture. But I'm not a lawyer. This is a pretty big brain. He from Mr. Damn, I wanna know. Son of a bitch. Could be anyone. That sounds right. Seven million dollars from Mr. Depp. True? That's oh, this is the one. This is the one. Six point eight, exactly. Your settlement amount is seven million dollars. That's correct. And then you released a statement in which you claimed you'd be donating the entire seven million dollars to charity, right? That's correct. Statement you stated you would be donating half of seven million dollars to the museum and the That's correct. You would be donating the other half to charity. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yes, that's correct. And you also stated. 
stated, with respect to the $7 million war settlement, that money played no role except for the extent that you could donate the money to charity. Yes, that's correct. Please pull up plaintiff's exhibit one, two, Oh, five. God, she has the receipts to prove she never donated. Oh, this is so painful. Oh. She tried so hard to look like a good person with the charity pledge. The statement of release was heard. That is correct. You publicly demanded that Mr. Depp pay the divorce settlement directly to you instead of the charities, right? That was always the agreement, actually, was for him to pay me directly. It was not his money as per the settlement agreement to give away and reap a tax benefit from. I said if he wants to do it and give it to charity, all of a sudden I should pay Refresh your recollection. So snappy. This is an article entitled Amber Heard and Johnny Depp Row Over Divorce Donations.
begging you, Lord, please don't let her say this. God, I need to do this. Don't let her do it. Oh my God, please, never gonna beat my ass. Don't let her say this. Man, this one piece of evidence here has got their her whole legal team kind of shook. For good reason, uh, obviously. Well, I understand, but we'll, we'll take care of that. Okay. As of right now, can we continue? We can, Your Honor, but I have an objection. Okay, come forward. Oh my God, Jesus! The stalling tactics. Holy shit! As if a lack of a copy means we have to stop that right now. So I only read what happened on Twitter, and I'm really excited to see how it plays out in court here, because I'm expecting, like, audible gasps from, like, the jury and the crowd here, once they drop the bombshell. And Magic, so Chance, and Reese of J Mac, GG, and says, Waffle. Your Jesus Christ. The desperation. I don't disagree with anything in the statement, but I just simply don't recall the statement that's been released. Is there anything inaccurate in that statement, Ms. Rooney? No. Can you move to admit objection? You're on a lack of foundation. I'll overrule the objection to vote 1260. Thanks for five Nova. Thank you. You're so happy to be a friend. Statement reads Amber Heard appreciates Johnny Depp's novel interest in supporting two of her favorite charities. The ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union for Domestic Violence, and the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. This is great and unexpected news. We would also insist that the full amount be paid immediately and not drawn out over many years. Anything less would be a transparent attempt by Johnny's counsel, Laura Wasser, and Patty Glazer to reduce their client's true payment by half under the guise of newfound concern for charities that he has never previously supported. Now, now drop it. Hit it. Hit it. Did I read that correctly? Yes. You spoke said about donating with. your divorce settlement on a Danish TV show. <clears throat> uh, I believe I said I had. Um, you said vanilla and I, I believe I said I donated it to charity, but it was already printed or are already. If we could please play Plaintiff's Exhibit 346, which is a portion of your appearance on this program. And we would ask that it be moved into evidence and any, ask for permission to publish Honor, it. it. It contains, it's, as here say, it contains other communications with other individuals. Your Honor, if we may approach okay. very briefly. Oh my God. Jesus, this is taking, this is taking so much just to get to the big point that she wants to make. Because her, Amber fucking turns lawyer is desperately trying every objection, every approach, and getting overruled at every step, but just drawing it out. Holy shit. In the prime Ashkin. So what's happening so far? She is setting the stage uh, with this charity thing with the divorce settlement. Amber made a big song and dance about how the money needs to be donated to these two specific charities from Johnny Depp. Oh, if he so chose, if he so chose to, but he needed to do it all in one lump sum instead of drawing it out over the course of installations, uh, making it a big deal. Like he has to do it right away. It should be done right away. Otherwise, it's not done correctly at all. Instead of being like paid out over time. And instead of allowing Johnny Depp to do that, she forced him to pay her money instead, so that way she would do it with the money. We haven't gotten to the big meat of it, because her fucking lawyer keeps interrupting getting to that point, because she's had to set all of, this, all of the groundwork here to show exactly what Amber Heard was claiming she wanted to do and would do, and what Johnny Depp had to do and should do versus the reality of what happened. And it's just taking a long time to get there because uh, Dr. Evil's lawyer over here keeps objecting everything unsuccessfully. Objection, they're about to say something that will win the case. <laughs> All right. Seven million dollars in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. ACLU is a human rights organization. Sorry, oh. ACLU is a prominent, um, uh, organization, nonprofit organization in the United States. Yeah. It's called the American right. Civil Liberties Union, and they work on behalf of marginalized communities uh, on the ground and in legislative reform. Right. And well, more power to you because that's that's something that I've never. I wanted of, uh, nothing. That's a dagger. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, again, I haven't Senator actually seen this. I only got the cliff notes. Two thousand eighteen. 
Right, Ms. Hurd? I don't recall when it was. It was in 2018. Right, Ms. Hurd? I don't remember when this was done. This was after you had received the full $7 million of your divorce settlement from Mr. Depp, wasn't it? Again, without knowing when it was recorded, I have no idea. That's such a st I'm going to take an approach here. That is the stupidest thing to say. It's a recorded television show. A very popular one, obviously. You can easily just look up when it was recorded. This is an awful defense, and it's not even a good stall because they obviously have the date that it aired. Jesus Christ. The $7 million divorce settlement was paid to you in full by February of 2018, right? That's correct. Objection to her testifying to what Mr. White testified to. That's okay. It said, actually, it, he literally testified to it in court. I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Depp's accountant, Edward White, testified that he made the payment directly to the ACLU and CHLA, correct? I believe so. Stop! What the fuck? Why does it keep doing that? You, What was the strategy there? It's the same test. Oh my god, she's dumb. When Mr. White testified that the payments were all made on schedule, right? My question was, you were here in court when Mr. White testified under oath that all the payments were made on schedule. I was here every day in court. I, I heard his testimony, yes. Okay. So in this October 2018, oh. you said that you had, quote, well, donated your entire Wanted nothing, end quote. That is correct. But you hadn't donated your entire, entire $7 million settlement to charity at that point, had you? That's incorrect. Sitting here today, Ms. Hurd, you still haven't donated $7 million oh. of your settlement to charity. Isn't that right? Incorrect. I pledged the entirety no, of the Ms. settlement, Hurd, $7 that, million, to question. charity, and I I intend to those oh, she knows. Okay, she knows. She knows. Please. She's now saying pledged. Sitting here today, you have not donated seven million Look at the movement now from the donated, audience. Not pledged. Donated a seven million dollars divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. But I don't. Ms. Hurd. No one does. It's terrible. That's a terrible defense. My donations are paid. Ms. Hurd. I have not yet drawn the suit me. So as of today, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Paid seven million dollars of your divorce settlement to charity, right? I have not been able to fulfill those uh, those uh, obligations yet. And that's because you did want it, didn't you? I didn't want anything and I didn't get anything. You wanted Mr. Depp's money. Didn't get it, wasn't interested in it. I love Johnny, that's why I was with him. You wanted praise for donating the money, right? Well, this is like right out of a movie. Incorrect. Holy shit. You wanted good press. You wanted to seem altruistic publicly. It wasn't my interest. Um, my interest is uh, in my name and clearing my name and at the time, if I was being called a liar and my beliefs were being questioned, I did. Then you lied again. I wanted to clear that up. I wanted to make a statement to make sure that there was not any doubt that I couldn't be labeled these things just because Johnny was a bigger star and had more publicity. Is it tier, tier two bear? Tier one. Everyone of your claims of domestic violence against Mr. Depp, right? No, I wanted to move on with my life. You wanted to make those claims seem believable. They are believable. They were. You wanted them to be seen. You wanted to be seen. Excuse me, as a noble victim of domestic violence. I actually never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. Nor have you? I ever called myself one. Oh, this is such a slap down. Jesus.
he, okay, I, I'm, I'm coming in with my own here. Even if that is the case and she wants to use that line, it completely goes against everything she set up in her other statement where she told Johnny he's not allowed to do that because it's not by the rules. She wouldn't allow it. So now she's now backpedaling into that same line of thinking where it's like, oh, actually, I didn't say that. Which is exactly what she forbid Johnny from doing in the first place. But nothing she's saying even fucking works. I disagree with the facts. <laughs> it makes me look bad, so I object. <laughs> oh, that's such a bombshell. It completely pokes holes in everything that she says, because it ruins her credibility.